Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to go through something slightly different and I want to show you a Python project that I worked on a couple of weeks ago. And why do I want to do this? Well, what I found online learning programming and, and Python myself is that there's a wealth of guides and tutorials and articles about the fundamentals of programming and, and Python specifically. So, you know, they cover loops and variables and logic. But once you've kind of got past that stage of learning the fundamentals, a good way to start kind of becoming more intermediate level programmer is to work on your own projects and build things, integrating systems. And it's easier said than done. And I find that there's a more limited selection of inspiration or topics about projects that you could do and how people approach them. Now, I've been lucky that my day job, I am using Python every day. I'm learning from colleagues who um, have a wealth of experience in that. So I can learn from how they approach problems and structure their code. And so today's video is an attempt to bridge that gap and take you through over the next series of few videos, how I've written and approached this project. So what is the project? Well, let me show you. So in the course of these next few videos, I will show you how I made this project. So it's a Python plot of the UK map and on it are 24 data points representing the 24 football teams of the EFL championship, which is the second tier football league in the UK. And so the extra cool thing about this plot is that when you click each data point, it will tell you some useful information about what club it is, uh, what stadium they play in, and also how far away it is from your current location. So you'll see here that my location is represented by this black dot, roughly in Nottingham. And so this point here, Derby County, is roughly 25 kilometers away from myself in Nottingham. Why did I create this? Well, the story is, I support my local, well, my hometown football club, AFC Bournemouth, who back in 2015 were promoted to the top tier of football, the Premier League. And miraculously, we had five good years in that top league, surviving and playing, you know, the most elite football. Unfortunately, a couple of months ago, we were relegated from that division and hence are now in the championship, the teams that I have plotted on this map. And why have I done that? Because as a fan of football, I like to attend the games and go visit new stadiums and towns and cities across the UK. It's a good way to actually see cities. And I thought to myself, okay, how do I turn this negative of getting relegated into a positive? Well, I can create a project so that I can plan which cities are near me, when are we playing the teams, and I can go watch my team and, and visit these towns. So I realized I may have lost the non-football fans already, but if you have still stuck around and you're not into football, don't worry, because the point of this video is to take you through what kind of Python libraries I've used, how I've approached writing the code, and the kind of steps to working on a Python project in my own time, like how is that done? And I will cover a variety of topics. There's kind of three broad phases. So there's data collection, which will cover web scraping data from Wikipedia to get the EFL team data. I used Google Maps API to get information about distances and directions between two data points on the map. And then finally, the said map, I need to figure out how I can actually plot a accurate geographical map of the UK. Turns out it's actually easier than expected and I'll show you that um, in an upcoming video. There's also the manipulation stage where I'm working quite generally with JSON data and pandas data frames and also a package called GeoPandas um, to kind of play around and tidy up my data. And then finally, for visualization, I use probably the most common plotting library in, in Python, which is matplotlib, but I actually delve into the interactive functionality. So that's how I achieved that you can click on each data point on this map and it renders useful information to the user, you know, much like a web application, but you're doing this all in Python with very limited code. It's really cool. So I encourage you to stick around and hopefully learn something on this journey together. Okay, so in this first video, I want to talk through the first major part of the data collection stage of this project, which is getting the useful information about the 24 teams in the EFL championship. So there's obviously a number of different sources I can get this information, but generally a very 
useful and free source of information is Wikipedia. Before you really delve into data collection, you kind of need to have a good idea of what information you want. And I can already picture this in my head, right? So I need to be able to plot the 24 teams, like who they are, what their stadiums are, so that I have that knowledge, right? Because at the moment, I just know that there's 24 teams and they're in a certain league. Okay, so what I found is when you go to the Wikipedia page, um, you can scroll down and there's actually a really, really nice table of information on Wikipedia. So you can see it has a list of all the club names. It also has their relevant stadiums. It does have some other useful columns that may be useful, not for this project. So that's kind of a really good start. But how do I go about programmatically getting that data into something usable, manageable Python? so that I can then plot it rather than me saying, oh, I'm going to copy and paste it, type it all out because, you know, we're programmers, we want to automate this. So we'll jump over to a Jupyter notebook where I've kind of given a, a guide of how I've approached this. And the first crucial thing you need to know is to commonly do web scraping or use a Python package called requests. Now, the focus of the request library is to enable Python users to easily make HTTP requests. Now, what do we mean by that? In essence, it just allows us to say, query a web address or ask a server for the information for a specific web address. So if I'm going to Google, I'll say, hey, Google server, send me the like HTML code and everything back to me. And so all we're doing after we import these packages, we're saying, we're gonna use the get method, which is saying, get the information from that specific uh, server or web address, and we'll capture the response in the response uh, variable. And then I've printed like the first 200 characters, and you'll see, um, if you're familiar with HTML, it is basically the first little 200 characters of HTML ML response. But the problem is, when you think about that, you wanna only get a portion of the information of this HTML. You don't want all of the tags and elements and text of this website. You want that specific table within the Wikipedia article. So how do you narrow it down to that with ease? And this is where the second package that we'll use comes in, which is Beautiful Soup. Really strange name, not really short sure background, but it is essentially a package for parsing HTML. Now, what does it actually mean to parse? It kind of means to read in and understand. And in the Wikipedia definition, which I've linked in this Jupyter notebook, it says that it creates a parse tree so that it can understand it. Now, I then looked up what parse tree is, and it says a parse tree is an ordered rooted tree that represents the syntactic structure of a string according to some context-free grammar. Okay, I kind of get the picture, right? There's clearly some structure that it maps out and it understands. I googled around and found an HTML parse tree. And you can see here that if you're familiar with HTML, it makes complete perfect sense. But anyway, there's like this structured HTML, like you have HTML, then you have like your body, then you have like paragraphs, and then you might have styling attributes like bold, paragraph, whatever. And so there's a logical structure to it. You can compare it to a family tree, right? There's a structure to that. You'll have your, but it's a tree and it's structured and you kind of know the rules about how families work together. The same um, principle works with HTML and that's how in the background, Beautiful Soup can kind of read in this HTML document and know and structure it, enabling the user to then query this document in a way and say, find me all the paragraphs or find me all the links that contain a bold item or some, you can literally query it however you like. And that's why it's so handy for web scraping. And so to use it, it's really simple. We'll create a variable called soup. Seems to be like the common uh, syntax. Uh, we'll wrap our HTML response that we got from requests package and we'll like instantiate this beautiful soup object. Now you can then, like I say, query it. So if you want us to know what the title tag is, we'll say soup.title and you can see, ah, oh, the title is the EFL Championship Wikipedia. That makes sense, right? You could get more advanced and say, I want to find all the links, which in HTML is represented by an A here. There are loads and loads of links as Wikipedia, and like that's pretty much how it works, right? It links between loads and loads of pages. So I tried printing all of them and it was so long. So I've just said, print me the first five and then just print the text of that um, each link. And so you can see there's a link for navigation, jump to search, a link to English Championship Golf. I guess that's like the disambiguation 
you know, when it, different articles are named the same thing. It also linked us to Coca-Cola Charity Championship. So yeah, those are the first five links, um, four links, sorry. And so coming back to our actual project, we know that the table that we are interested in is, is what we want to get to. And now there's a really handy way to find out what kind of tags or elements you're looking at in HTML. If you go back to the web page, right click and press inspect, it'll bring up these Chrome, it's your in Chrome um, developer tools, and it will jump to the HTML code that represents uh, this table. So you can see I've got it here, and on the right, it's saying this is a table tag with a specific class of wiki table sort table. So we can use that information to narrow down our search in our HTML documents. And so we can employ soup, find a table with the class of wiki table sort table. And when we run that, we can see we've got our EFM, EFL championship table. Um, and if you scroll here, you can see Barnes EFC, Birmingham FC, and so on. Quite a lot of code there, but you, and so I'll just quickly capture that into the table HTML variable. So we're, we've made very good progress, right? We've got the HTML of the table in a variable. So there's just two more steps to do. We want it into a more manageable um, data structure. And in Python, the most common library for data structures and, and manipulating them is pandas. Luckily, that has a number of different functions for reading in different data types. And one of them is read HTML. So what I've done is, is wrap the table HTML code I've made it a string so it's interpretable and then applied the read HTML and ported it to DF unfiltered, like an unfiltered data frame. And if you print the head of that, you'll see we've now got our data frame with clubs, finishing position, location, stadium, capacity. My final step is I'm going to filter it down to those two columns using this syntax. And we'll see there that I have all of the data that I care about. Now, obviously doing this all in a Jupyter notebook is not the best idea for like a, a bigger project. So I then kind of, after playing around with it, brought that all under one function called get EFL team data. And so you can see, I, I, I say this function pulls the latest team data from a Wikipedia table. And it's saying we're using the requests library to get the HTML response from that, that Wikipedia article. I pass it with beautiful soup. I search for the table. I read it into a data frame. I filter it and it returns it. And so I can just finally show you all of those steps that we've done as the one function. So you'll see here that I've said um, EFL.get EFL team data. The EFL represents this EFL mapping.py script. So I actually imported it already at the top and aliased it as EFL. So that's, that's what's going on there. If I run that and then print the data frame, you can see all zero to 23 teams are represented with their associated stadiums. So that's it for the first part of the data collection, which is using web scraping to capture team data from Wikipedia. Okay, so that wraps up uh, video one in this Python project series for the EFL football team mapping project. This is something new I'm trying out to kind of give people an overview of how I approach projects, how I'm writing code, how I'm thinking about things. If you did get some value out of it, have learned maybe a new Python package, a new way of approaching code, or just like my approach, please let me know what you enjoyed in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it. And hit like and subscribe if you got some value out of it. On the flip side, if I've done something wrong or I could have written something in a more efficient way, please let me know because I want to kind of encourage an open communication with my channel. And, you know, I accept that I'm not an expert. I consider myself an intermediate and I'm here to learn but I'm also here to share my personal experience along the way. And so let me know also in the comments if I've been an idiot in some way. I, I really enjoy it. And finally, stick around for more videos in this series. In the next one, I will talk through using Google Maps API to get the directions and distance and coordinates of these different football clubs. I will then also cover in the third video how to create a UK map in Python before moving on to manipulating the data to get the structure I want, and finally plotting it, visualizing it, and using the matplotlib interactive tools so that you can kind of allow users to click and respond to events. So I'm excited to cover the rest of that and kind of bring this project to life in its development. So yeah, stick around. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.